In this video, we will onboard the Kaitera Sunset Mini on Planet Watch. In this step by step tutorial, we will go through what a Type 3 sensor is, the rewards, how to configure the sensor, onboard it on Planet Watch, and also a guideline for deploying them at hosts and setting custom alarms. Coming right up! So let's see what a Type 3 sensor in the PlanetWatch ecosystem represents. It's a premium indoor sensor that is not tied to Tier 1 and Tier 2 locations, so it doesn't matter for the daily world if you place it in a house inside the village or in a central apartment in a capital. What is required is that the location is not deserted, so it should be a home where people live or an office space that is used. The other requirement is to not have more than one Type 3 sensor per location. So no, you can't put one in each room of a house. They need each to be in a separate household or location. Now, what about earnings? We get 30.8 planets as max reward and on top of that we get an additional 50% more to 46.2 planets max reward in total per day. This bonus will expire on December 31st but before that we will get to vote if you want to permanently raise the rewards for Type 3 to 46.2 planets. The rewards are sent each day for the data transmission on the prior day. And the 50% bonus is sent each day an hour later after the daily reward. Going into the setup, we must first decide if you leave it on a flat surface or mount it with the provided accessories. We can let it on a surface in the vertical position. The main thing here is that the bottom and the top of the sensors are the airports through which the air is circulated in order to be measured, so they are not to be covered. Step number one is to open the front panel by giving it a firm thug. Here we can see the two placeholders for the modules, an on-off switch, a reset button, a status LED, and the sensor's identification information. The second step is to power it. Yes, with the front panel opened like this. I'll be using the USB-C option in order to power it. The status LED should start blinking yellow, indicated that we are in the config module for the next 15 minutes. If your unit does not start blinking yellow, repeat the plugin and turning on steps that I just did. Next we will need to install the modules. The most important part is to place them with the Kaitera logo and the plastic ring facing forward towards us and the pins up. We can place them in which order we like and in what socket we want. And it's not only doable but highly recommended to install or swap the modules while the sensor is on. We'll start with installing the silver particulate matter module. We should press it until we hear a click. If everything is ok, the LED of the socket should blink once. If it flashes continuously or stays on, the module requires replacement or it has a failure and needs to be looked at. To remove a module, just grab it by the plastic ring and pull it out. Now that we have it on, we need to set up the Sensage Mini. To do that, we have two options. We can use a laptop or we can use a phone. I will show you the phone version and talk about any differences between the two methods as I go along. So grabbing the phone, we need to go to App Store for iPhone or Play Store for Android and download the Keytera Enterprise app. Not the live one, the Enterprise one. If you want to use the laptop, you need to go to their support website and download the Keytera Enterprise configuration tool. This is available for all platforms, Mac, Windows, even Linux. The link to this page is, will be in the description below. Once we downloaded the app or installed the program, open it. The next step is to connect to the Wi-Fi generated by the Sensage Mini. The name will start with Ktera. If you don't see its Wi-Fi, try turning it off and then on and look for the blinking yellow light that indicates the setup mode. Going back to the app or the program, we will tap on configure. If you see any pop-ups about permissions, tap on OK. Once we have a connection with the sensor, we will see a device details view. 
The most important part is to copy the UDID, which is the sensor specific ID. We will use it in a few minutes. Another thing to check is the sensor life, where we can see the module's health. The next step that we need to take is to go to the configuration tab. Here we can set a name for the location of the sensor and the name for it. Once that is done, we need to connect it to the internet. In the interface we can choose which method should the sensor choose. It makes sense for a manual selection since there are cases where we want to power the sensor mini through the Ethernet but have the internet connection through Wi-Fi. If you use Ethernet for connection and have DCHP then there's no need for things for you to configure. If you use Ethernet and need a static IP you need to set the mode to be static and then input the IP address. If you want to use Wi-Fi, bear in mind that the sensor only knows the 2.4 GHz connection, so make sure that the router has it enabled if you tinkered with your hotspot settings. By default, it is. In the SSID, we need to put the name of the Wi-Fi and be careful that this is scan sensitive, so write it exactly as you see it in the Wi-Fi list and also the password for it. Another thing to consider is, if you use the phone, it will prompt you that the Wi-Fi connection has no internet access and if you like to switch to the mobile data, tap keep trying Wi-Fi or something similar to stay connected to the sensor. This will appear both on iPhone and on Android devices. Underneath, we need to check this device will be connected to the internet and make sure that the sleep mode and disable configuration mode are both off. Unlike Atmo or Element, we will never reset the TVOC or CO2 levels. These are advanced settings for the service use only. The baseline correction happens automatically over time. The last step is to tap on configuration device in order to send all these configuration settings to the Sensage Mini. On the sensor itself, it will enter pairing mode. So the status LED should flash slowly with a green color. In case of success, the LED will turn off. Otherwise, it will flash red for no connection and it will stay red for device failure. If so, restart the whole process. If successful, we will place the top lid back again by pressing on the corners. Great! The last step is to open a browser and go to dashboard.ktera.com. The link will be in the description below, of course. We need to create an account. Now, once we do and we are logged in, we will tap on Add Device. In the first field, we can set it under a category, here name Project, and the most important thing is to paste the UDID that we copied when we connected the sensor in the setup mode. Once we are done, we will see the sensor and we can see detailed readings and the status of it. Bear in mind that it will probably do a firmware update after it will be connected to the internet and it will take a few minutes until we will see the sensor online. Also, this page is not updated live, so you need to refresh it in order to see the latest data. Awesome! Give this video a thumbs up if you think it's useful. Now, going into the onboard process, the first step is to get the new app. Go to the App Store if you are on an iOS device or Play Store if you are on an Android one. Search for Planet Watch and download the one with the same name. Planet Watch Wearable is the app for Atmodio Pro only. Once downloaded, open it. Here, you will need to log in using the Planet Watch Explorer account. This is the one we use when we verified our identity. This is different than the one we use when we buy licenses and sensors. If you don't have the Planet Watch Explorer account, you need to create it. Use the same email that you used when buying the licenses. Type in a password for this account. And if you like the content that I make and want to support me, you can use my referral code. It will be shown right now on the screen and also you can find it in the description below to copy paste it. After the registration or logging in, I suggest going into the settings and enabling the face or fingerprint authentication. This is way faster than the logging in using the user and the password. 
Next, we need to add a wallet where we will receive the reward for the sensor. We can create a new Algorand wallet in the new app by giving it a name and then we will get the 25 words passphrase. Please write them down as they are not stored anywhere else. If you lose these words, you will lose the access point to the wallet and everything in it. If you log out in the app and then log in with different emails, all wallets are cleared. If you create or import a new wallet, don't worry. PlantWatch will send you the necessary algos for NFTs and plant activation. I will import my wallet as it is already created. To do that, just give it a name and write down the 25 words passphrase corresponding to that wallet with small caps and with exact one space between the words. No commas, no order numbers. Then tap on verify. If everything is ok, you will see the wallet in this section. Great! Now let's onboard the Keytera Sensage Mini. At the bottom, tap on sensors and tap on the plus button in the top right corner. Here we will see all of our bot licenses that are not yet attached to a sensor. Select a type 3 license. In this new view, where it tells us to enter a token, we need an API key from the Keytera dashboard. So open the browser, log in into dashboard.keytera.com, click on the profile icon in the top right corner and go to account settings. Here, under the API keys, copy the key value. Go back to the PlantWatch app and paste it. For the device ID, we need the UDID. So let's go back to Keytera dashboard and open our sensor. Here, next to the firmware version, we have an information icon. Tap on it and copy the long number just below the device information. And paste it in the PlantWatch app. Then click on proceed. In the next view, we need to select the wallet in which we want to receive the rewards. Then there is one last step. We need to specify the address where the sensor will be. This needs to be accurate since PlantWatch will verify this and if they find inconsistencies, they will ban you. If you need to move the sensor to a new place, you need to open a ticket and specify this and the new address where the sensor will be active. Once this is done, we will tap on proceed. Now, we need to wait until PlantWatch transfers the NFTs for the sensor and the license. If you see this error, don't worry, just try again. If the servers are loaded, you might need to retry a few times before the onboarding process is successfully completed or even try later. If the onboarding is successful, you will get this message. Awesome! Give yourself and this video a thumbs up for doing this. Since we have an onboarded sensor, let's talk about sensor management. First, how can we make sure that everything works ok and we send data to PlantWatch? We can first see that we have an online sensor in the Keytera dashboard and all the readings are live. Second, we can set alarms, including one for offline sensor. To do that, click on alerts, create alert. In this window, we will give it a name and select the sensor on which the alert will be activated upon. In the next step, we can set the email that will receive the alert and the last step we need to configure when it will be triggered. Press the delete button on the overall index, under the select drop down choose offline and hit the plus button. Just click on save current and our offline alarm is activated. And the last but not least point is how to manage multiple sensors, since we can have only one sensor per type at our home. The others will need to be deployed to hosts. There might be multiple strategies here, but here is what I will do. I will have a wallet for each location and each sensor deployed there will be activated on that wallet. This way it will be easy for me to track how many planets each location generates and to give the 10% of the reward to the hosts. In order for them to have access to the data, I will create a Keytera dashboard account for each sensor and will hand them down the user and password for that account. To do that and still maintain control, I'll be using the Gmail's alias feature. That allows us to have under the same email address 
multiple aliases using the plus sign followed by a number. So for Keytera dashboard, all these are different email addresses that each has a right to an account, but they all point to the same real address on Gmail. So if you have other strategies to manage your sensor fleet, share with us in the comments below. That's it for this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already and stay tuned. Until next time, see ya!